Hello and welcome to the Art of Overnight. It's your boy Dan, and today I have a special guest, my friend Jacob. Hi. Jacob is a, a big maker of the Artisans Asylum. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Oh, this is the biggest maker space on the East Coast. There's all kinds of different robots and ways to do things with, you know, metal and wood and plastic and electronics, 3D printing, laser cutting, all that stuff. That's right. Well, we'll see. We'll go and take a look and, and look at some of the equipment. All right, let's check it out. Come with us. Why don't you guys go first? This is some work by someone named Gretchen who came to the asylum who was originally a mathematician and then they got tired of doing that kind of work and found plasma cutting when she came here and started experimenting with making math inspired sculptures. She's been pretty successful at uh, making a lot of these different pieces of art. A lot of it's pretty awesome. This has had some major installations in New York recently. A lot of people come here and they have a transformative experience learning to do something new that they've never done before and find a totally different direction to go in life. Okay, this is uh, something that Max worked on. He started off doing a lot of machining. He machined this, this engine over here. It's a working steam engine. He, he took a class here to learn how to do all the, uh, all the stuff on the mill and the lathe. And he eventually moved on to other kinds of metal and made this. It was a Halloween costume, this, this big crazy aluminum bird. has a multi, it, it integrates multiple types of materials, wood and metal and feathers and fabric. Oh, this is a uh, Science Bob space. He's done a lot of uh, really public stuff on uh, the Jimmy Kimmel show. He did some science, like trying to get people excited about what's possible with science and what's interesting and what's aesthetic about it. He's done a lot of different uh, mathematical type of things. He had, this was a, a Rube Goldberg machine over here that he produced for uh, 4th of July. I'm not sure what show it was for, but it was, Pretty awesome, had a lot of different mechanisms, set off some exothermic reactions, some uh, gravity, all kinds of awesome effects like that. This is uh, Echo, she does a lot of metal work, multimedia, she does a lot of fine art type stuff, kinetic sculptures, she teaches a kinetic sculpture class and a welding class, lots of different uh, uh, integrations with electronics too, lighting type of stuff, costumes. This is uh, Dave, I think he, I'm not sure which company he works for, it might be 3D Systems or Zcore, but he brings in a lot of really complex 3D prints. It's like a serious 3D printing company and just like sets his stuff up so that you can see it. It's developing like the future of, uh, of additive pr uh, production. Huh? Castle. It's a castle, yeah. It's a Minecraft castle. Yeah, so with color. Yeah, 3D printed in color. With like bearings that actually work. They're full color. Check that out, Mike. Uh, this is Dube, he's a local artist. He, uh, this is uh, a piece of public art that he set up. It was all plasma cut on the CNC plasma cutter and then welded together. He's also done Hearthbeat, which is a flame effect that was set up uh, on New Year's. You can't really, it's not really set up in here. Um, and then he's part of Video Belief, which was a 360 degree video dome. It's been set up a bunch of times in Boston and uh, in a Burning Man and some other places. Got a singing Tesla coil here. Been a long time, still not done. A wooden boat? A wooden boat, yeah. I mean, that's what boats are usually made out of, wood, believe it or not. Or they used to be, used to all be made out of wood. Somebody's boat project. 
all my awful art. It's like a pretty typical wood shop, got your like normal like chop saws and planers, band saws, table saws. The one thing that's different here is that we have a CNC machine over here. It's a it's kind of old now, they're gonna get rid of it soon, but this was a homemade CNC machine that can do wood and plastic. It moves pretty slow. It's the one I learned on, but it still gets the job done if you're just starting out. Has a wooden frame mostly. The entry is like pretty terrible, but it, it does work. Or it did work at some point. It's like the most simple system for moving a gantry is a chain. And then the next one is a rack and pinion system. And then the best is when you have a screw. A lead screw is like, or a ball screw is usually like the best. Yeah, the most, the most precision control, I suppose. Yeah. Let's go look at some other machines. <laughs> it's a drill press. You know what that is, right? This is the machine I've moved on to using now. This is like a really serious CNC machine that can do wood and plastic and aluminum. It has like a 18,000 RPM spindle. It has a vacuum table that's like insanely loud and annoying. It's got like all these like insane collets. <laughs> They're like so big. You need like these giant wrenches just to like. Wrenches. You need like the biggest wrenches ever just to like put the tools in there. It's pretty crazy. And like you know, giant drill bits. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty exciting. And then over here we have a CNC plasma cutter. So this is more of like a rack and pinion system. It's a little bit more accurate. It has um, a plasma cutter, which is like, it basically does the same thing a welder does, except that it shoots compressed air out. So as it's melting the steel, it can like push it into this water. So you can just cut stuff out with it. It's always cutting into these slats, so then you're always needing to like grind it down. It's kind of an ugly process, not very accurate, but it sometimes it's the best thing you have if you're trying to make something complicated in 2D. Cleaned all this up yesterday. Like jump shears. Oh yeah, this is probably kind of exciting. You're filming. That's how you like. There, let me do that again. Usually you like slide some metal in there, and then you just like. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. We were just cleaning these up yesterday. We had to like open it up and take all the belts out. It's kind of like a drill press, except it can move in three dimensions. So you can like put a spinning bit in here and clamp a piece of material into the vise and like face it off or like do a really precise circle or like whatever kind of cut you want to do. It's like how your engine block in your car is made. This is, this is a more serious milling machine. It has ball screws in it, and it has a CNC part, so you can actually program little programs that can like cut circles and pockets and things, so that you can like type it all in on this screen and then just tell it to go, and like you bring it down to the right level, and it just kind of cuts it out for you automatically. It has a table that, uh, that will move So it's basically kind of a robot. This is probably the best C 
CNC machine? I know, it really is. Well, it's not the best. I mean, they're actually getting rid of it soon, but this is, this is a, a vertical milling center that can do uh, aluminum and steel. Well, there used to be a vise in there, so you, you clamp the work into there, and then you can like just tell it on this, all these crazy buttons from the 70s to like cut something out, and it'll just do it for you. It's pretty Got this uh, uh, Doctor Who, Doctor Who door here. <laughs> That's what the facilities manager wanted. For uh... there were robots in here. There were robots in here fighting. They could like they had like all these like blades and things. They could cut each other and like try to destroy each other. This is this is a big polycarbonate uh, box that like protects protects the viewers from the robots. <laughs> I don't know who made those. Those are pretty cool. Pod robot, the guy that started this place. This was sort of one of his goals: is he wanted to have a new place for building robotics and like experimenting with hydraulic-based robots. He wanted to build up a whole bunch of people that were going to do this kind of thing. And the project he wants to finish is this rideable hexapod. There will be two people will be able to ride in it. It's going to span a, a gap that's bigger than like two cars, basically. Huh? Yeah. This is, a motor, this is a motor vacuum. I think that's probably the seat up there. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people point that out. 